Hi, this is Wishup, and I just want to talk a little bit about this uh, time of year, especially if you're a person who finds that you don't enjoy Valentine's Day or never really got the point of it. I want to talk about some older uh, worldwide traditions about this time of year that I hope might be interesting and, and bring into focus more universal human longings this time of year than what has kind of become, at least in the U.S., where I am, a pretty mass-marketed kind of holiday, and one that speaks a lot of times about a couple alone rather than a sense of community, which most of the other uh, traditions from this time of year are about. So let me start and say this time of year has always been a holiday, um, at least as long as we know. Uh, humans have celebrated it because we just came out of the halfway point of winter from the winter solstice. We hit the halfway point. And again, in the U.S., we've got Groundhog's Day, which is not nearly as inspiring as like the Festival of Lights or Imbolc, the Feast of St. Bridget, where we celebrate the first births of the year of the baby animals and so we know spring will come and we light lights to celebrate that we are halfway through winter and if we were in other parts of the world instead of the groundhog looking for its shadow we would have the crone of winter looking for her shadow which is to me kind of more kick-ass really um anyway so coming right after that we have this mid-February point, this new moon in February. And in the U.S., it becomes Valentine's Day. But I want to talk about the other celebrations um, that typically would take place at this time of year. So um, you may know at the same time of this new moon, um, there's going to be the Chinese New Year. So the Chinese New Year is typically a family holiday where everybody goes home. We have a family meal together. We clean the house. We do spring, so kind of spring cleaning. We clear out the old. And then we have the fireworks and we celebrate the new. So we go through this purging and then this celebration. You'll see that pattern in other festivals as well. So, for example, the same time of year this year, um, the huge Hindu festival of Maha Shivaratri. Uh, Shiva celebrated every lunar month, but this month is the big celebration, which is, I think, February 15th or 16th. It's, it's, it's the new moon. Um, and we celebrate at this time of year, especially overcoming ignorance and darkness. It's a solemn sort of holiday where you ask Shiva to help you be liberated from the things that you want to get rid of. Um, and then we celebrate moving into the new year in this sense of uh, cleanness and purification and lightheartedness. So if we were in ancient Rome, we might be celebrating something called the Parentalia, which it would be February 2nd, like around Groundhog's Day, that halfway point of winter, we would start making little home offerings with our nearest and dearest to our ancestors. And we would be wishing them well and offering them respect. And then at the end of a two-week period, yes, right around the same new moon, we would have a much bigger feast to culminate that celebration. And any spirits who weren't happy with what had been done for them would have to get out. They would just be kicked out by the head of the household because we've given you a big party and now you got to get going. Um, the idea of Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday, is going to be February 14th. <laughs> and it's always near the same time again uh, of the year. And so Ash Wednesday, as you might notice, even if you're not Catholic, people will have ashes on their foreheads. These are ashes burned from the Palm Sunday triumphant celebrations of the year before. And then you put the ashes on your forehead to uh, 
sort of commemorate your sorrows and regrets over the previous year. And you're sort of purifying yourself as you head toward Easter, this resurrection celebration, which will come later at the time of the typical spring human celebrations. So um, we celebrate Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras the day before Ash Wednesday, the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. And people run around and they party their brains out because they know they're heading into Lent and typically Lent is a solemn time and people will give up things, um, uh, voluntarily sacrifice certain things as a devotion. Um, but also people run around on Mardi Gras and in Carnival with masks on and they make tons of noise. And one of the reasons that we do that typically, and you might recognize it from Halloween, is we wear masks when we're dealing with the spirits because we don't want them uh, who don't belong to us to follow us home. You don't mind having your family spirits, but you don't want some flotsam and jetsam following you home. So you're wearing um, masks and you're driving out spirits who shouldn't be there by making tons of noise, by just making it unpleasant for them. So you can see there's a theme in all of these celebrations this time of year. But in the United States holiday of Valentine's Day, we tell this couple, um, actually, I'm going to use a card for this too. Look at this. This is from my retro Lenormand. This is what Valentine's Day in the U.S. looks like. It's got a shape that's kind of consumerist in nature. It looks like this couple exists only for each other. There's no sense of the family or the past. Yes, there is a hint of a new bright future, but really this is kind of a different holiday. Um, and so what happens is when people get to this time of year in human history and also in other places in the world, people are celebrating this purging. We're cleaning out the old, we're getting ready to kick off the new. And we're going to kick off the new with a feeling of being lightened and purified and brightened. And we're making peace with the past in order to do that. So people get to Valentine's Day in the way that we celebrate it in the U.S. And frequently they can't stop thinking about their exes. Or they feel very alone. They long for a sense of community. But they're told, oh, if you want to hang out with your mom and grandma on Valentine's Day, that's pathetic. But you would be it would be perfect if you were a Hindu in India or if you were celebrating Chinese New Year. That's, that would be exactly what you ought to be doing. So in some ways, um, well, let me continue. Uh, you probably have noticed in the U.S. that Valentine's Day can be very consumerist and also um, status related. It's about public displays. Did somebody do for you in public? Um, in a way that makes you look good in competition with someone else. Uh, what are you doing to other people? People feel their deepest feelings kind of called out on Valentine's Day in a way that is in contrast with the natural tendency of this time of year to be inward because we're still in the second half of winter. The seeds are still underground. The shoots have not sprouted. So being called out in this public forum to uh, demonstrate your, you know, love in some very expensive, very public way can feel, um, it can just feel conflicted and not very good. It doesn't feel necessarily like the right kind of celebration that you want to have. And so people can feel uncomfortable about showing their feelings. They can feel uh, uncomfortable about having to make a public display of them, they can really be thinking in a very normal way about their past, about cleaning up old things. And that can be old relationships, about making peace, about getting ready for the spring ahead. So the timing of this as this two-person, purely romantic um, holiday to me, is sort of misplaced. I'd sort of rather see it at May Day, which is, you know, May 1st, which is when conk cha conk conk you know, the animals and the spring festivals are all about the maypole. And I think you see where I'm going with that. 
But the fact that this is a traditional holiday and has been a point of human holidays for many years is true. And it is about your heart and it is about other people. But to a large extent, it's about clearing out your own closets so that you face the new year with optimism and letting what is time to go, letting it go and asking um, whatever your spiritual tradition or your ancestors to help you to let it go so that you move into the spring with lightness and freshness and a sense of being purified. So if you'd like to know more about ancestor work, um, especially I have a series called uh, Ancestor Work for uh, Orphans and Outcasts. You don't have to be an orphan or an outcast, but a lot of people don't know how to approach ancestor work if they weren't particularly close with the family that they've known in life, they think maybe they don't have an ancestor pool. You have a cheering section and you don't have to know their names. You don't have to know where they came from. They know you because they're your ancestors and they want to bring you support and luck. That's one of the most powerful things that they do. They will give you a sense of grounding, of protection, and of luck. So having that warm relationship with your ancestors is something I would heartily recommend for everybody. So I will put a link to that um, playlist um, here and in the description box. But making a wish for your ancestors can be as simple as just wishing them well. Whoever you are, the people that I came from, I wish you well on your journey. Please wish me well on mine. That's it. It can be that simple. But coming to terms with the normal quietness of this kind of season and the normal way that you're going to be thinking about the past and making peace with it, I hope provides an antidote to kind of the hyper consumer message that says you should be whooping it up. You should be having a great time. Why aren't you having a great time? Is something wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with you. And if you clue in to these, not clue in, but if you connect in with these other celebrations, which are long standing and huge, there's so many people celebrating them. You can connect in with that current of human energy, of purification, of lightning, of optimism for the new year. And that can be so fulfilling. So I just want to offer that um, as a possibility. And I sort of, I pulled these out, but I forgot to put them up. Here's like, here's a nice little Shiva. Here's a dragon. Here's another dragon on the world card. I sort of pulled these out for the Chinese New Year. Um, oh, and this is a nice one too. This is Strange Valentine from the uh, Oracle of Shadows and Light, where her Valentine is a very friendly Yeti. Love doesn't need to look like anyone else says it needs to look. Feeling it is the most important thing. So I hope that you enjoy this time of year and let it be a process of letting the old drop away and letting the new come in because spring will come and you want your mental and emotional closets to be clean because there's going to be a lot of awesome new energy that you're going to want to try on and dance around in. So uh, that's my blather on that and rock on with your bad selves. <laughs>